Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana, and for this video, we are going to be doing my October TBR. Alright, so for this video, I specifically wanted to make sure I got my TBR out early, particularly because... I just love making TBRs, but also I am going to be one of the co-hosts for Black Aween this month, and so I wanted to go ahead and make sure I put my TBR for that as well out and about so everybody could see what I would be reading while we go through this journey together. So starting with my like normal TBR for right now, the things that I was like, you know, I kind of feel like reading that this month, kind of mood reading a little bit, go from there. So. Um, the first book I wanted to give a chance, it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a while, I own it, it's just packed up, so I'm just gonna borrow the audio from the library probably, and that is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi. I remember when this book came out, it was super hyped, everybody was kind of comparing it to Shadow and Bone a little bit, and I wanted to read it, partially because I thought the cover was beautiful, but because also I was interested, and then I think I was just reading Shadow and Bone, the trilogy, and I didn't want to read them back to back because I didn't think that would be fair. And then I ended up just never really picking it up when I wanted to. So I decided to give it a try now, especially because I believe it's finished, like the trilogy is done. So I want to, now that it's finished, I want to go ahead and, and start the first one. If I like it, then I can just read straight through in to the rest of the books. So that is my plan. I don't really remember what this is about, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read you the synopsis and we will go from there. It's 1889. The city is on the cusp of industry and power and the expo exposition universelle has breathed new life into the streets and dredged up ancient secrets. Here, no one keeps tabs on dark truths better than treasure hunter and wealthy hotelier Severin Montagnet. Alary. When the elite, ever-powerful order of Babel coerces him to help them on a mission, Severin is offered a treasure that he never imagined, his true inheritance. To hunt down the ancient artifact the order seeks, Severin calls upon a band of unlikely experts, an engineer with a debt to pay, a historian banished from his home, a dancer with a sinister past, and a brother in arms, if not blood. Together they will join Severin as he explores the dark, glittering heart of Paris. What they find might change the course of history, but only if they can stay alive. So, I now that I'm reading this, maybe it was Six of Crows people were comparing it to, I see why they were comparing it to this, um, but I also see how it could be very different. So I want to give it a try, I want to see if I can enjoy it. I didn't really like Six of, Six of Crows that much, when I first read it, I thought it was just okay, but as I've gotten further away from that read that I did, I just was not a fan. I don't really feel like I'm going to continue on with that duology slash series that she's doing. I think I'm just going to leave Lee Bardugo alone for right now until she comes out with something else that intrigues me. Um, so I want to give this a try and see if maybe I could like this a little bit better. But I don't know. So the next book I have my, on my list is The Candle in the Flame by Nafiza Azad. L I'm not going to lie, this was a cover buy. I saw the cover and I bought it. I didn't really read the synopsis until after I bought it. And then I was like, you know what, this still sounds intriguing. But the cover is what got me. It was so beautiful. I could not resist. We're going to read the synopsis right now because I honestly can't remember what it was even about. And that's okay. But... Fatima lives in the city of Noor, a thriving stop along the Silk Road. There, the music of myriad languages fills the air and people of all faiths weave their lives together. However, the city bears scars of its recent past when the chaotic tribe of Shayatin Jin slaughtered its entire population except for Fatima and two other humans. Now ruled by a new Maharaja, Noor is protected from the Shayatin by the Ifrit, Jin of order and reason, and by their commander, Zulfikar. But when one of the most potent of the Ifrit dies, Fatima is changed in ways she cannot fathom, ways that scare even those who love her. 
Ode in hand, Fatima is drawn into the intrigues of the Maharaja and his sister and the affairs of Zulfikar and the Jinn and the dangers of a magical battlefield. So this sounds interesting. It's giving like Amber and the Ashes kind of but a lot older and to be honest I'm I'm a history teacher. I'm a big history buff and so this sounds intriguing to me as well. And honestly, I realized like reading this and then reading The Guild of Wolves, I definitely didn't mean to pick like a bunch of historical fantasies, but I also don't mind it. Next we have The Sky Blues by Robbie Couch. So this one has been on my TBR since it came out. I thought it sounded like a really good story, a really good YA coming of age queer story. And so I'm really intrigued to check it out and I've been kind of pushing it off because again I got also nervous that I'd be disappointed. But I'm willing to give it a chance um, this coming month and see what happens. So I'm going to read the synopsis real quick. So Sky Baker may be openly gay but in his small insular town making sure he was invisible has always been easier than being himself. Determined not to let anything ruin his senior year, Sky decides to make a splash at his high school's annual beach bum party by asking his crush, Ali, to, perf to prom. And he has 30 days to do it. What better way to start living loud and proud than by pulling off the gayest promposal Rock Ledge, Michigan has ever seen? Then Sky's plans are leaked by an anonymous hacker in a deeply homophobic e-blast that quickly goes viral. He's fully prepared to drop out and skip town altogether until his classmates give him a reason to fight back by turning his 30-day promposal countdown into a school-wide hunt to expose the e-blast perpetrator. But what happens at the end of the 30 days? Will Sky get to keep his hard-won visibility? Or will a small town blue stop him from being his true self? I, when I first read this, I was like hooked. It sounded really intriguing. It sounded like it could be a sweet story. And I... I'm really looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it. So I'm really excited to give this a chance and I really, really hope that I enjoy it. Alright, so the next book I have on this list is uh, The Inheritance of Orquadia Divina. I know I butchered that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> By Zoraida, Zoraida Cordova. Again, I, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. I apologize. Um, this Monet has been raving about for like two years almost and so I finally want to go ahead and give this a chance because she's like gone on and on about how good it is and how it's one of her favorite reads ever so I'm really intrigued um I don't know the synopsis of this either so we're gonna find out together right now so the Montoyas are used to a life without explanations they know better than to ask why the pantry never seems to run low or empty or why their matriarch won't ever leave their home in Four Rivers, even for graduations, weddings, or baptisms. But when Cord Orcordia Divina invites them to her funeral and to collect their inheritance, they hope to learn the secrets that she has held onto so tightly their whole lives. Instead, Orcadia is transformed, leaving them with more questions than answers. Seven years later, her gifts have manifested in different ways from Marimar, Ray, and Tatinelli's daughter, Rhiannon, granting them unexpected blessings. But soon, a hidden figure begins to tear through their family tree, picking them off one by one as it seeks to destroy Arcadia's line. Determined to save what's left of their family and uncover the truth behind their inheritance, the four descendants travel to Ecuador to the place where Orcadia buried her secrets and broken promises and never looked back. To be honest, that's not what I was expecting from the synopsis. And it actually sounds really interesting. I'm all about quest stories, especially when there's a group, especially when the group may potentially be family. So I'm actually really, really here for it. And I'm excited. It also is giving me a little bit of like um, Encanto vibes, a little bit, but again, here for it. Alright, and then the last one from my like picked TBR, um, just in general, is I Want to Be Where You Are by Christina Forrest. I believe this is about a girl who is wanting to audition for a dance school and her mother forbids it and so she comes up with a way to like get herself there and to travel and I think she ends up maybe traveling with a crush or something like that. This sounded like a really cute YA and I've been wanting to read this for a while so that's why I finally decided to go ahead and just add it to the TBR overall. 
So, then we have our buzzword book, which is Magic and Other Words. I actually have a book for that, and it um, is going to be part of my Blackween TBR, so I'm going to share that in just a second. And then magic, my magical readathon prompt for this month is star. It has stars on the cover or a book with a map. I am pretty sure I can uh, find one of these in any of the books I'm going to be reading this month. So now to my black weed TBRs. I am leading the Noor Apothecary area and so I roll, I chose to do the um, novice path which means I had to do one to two prompts and the numbers I rolled for the TBR was I believe number one and then number six which was a romance subplot and then my free space and then I also added in my group book so I had three books all together that I will be reading for this black -a -ween round so for the group book I will be reading the plot is murder by VM Burns there will be a live show for this um, which will be announced at a later date featuring me and Brie from locked booktition and then the next one I pulled was a romance subplot and the book I chose for that prompt is a uh, Hollywood Homicide by Kelly Garrett. My Hoopla has the audio, so I'll be listening to that. Um, this was a Brie recommendation, so I'm really hoping I will enjoy it. And then for my free space, I'm going to be choosing another book Brie recommended, and that was A Spell for Trouble by Esme Addison. And so this one, I also can get the audiobook from Hoopla, so I'm really excited. Um, also, Hoopla had my had the audiobook for the group book as well, so shout out to Hoopla for holding it down for me. Alright, and then, so now I have just a few extras that I'm going to be adding on for this month. Uh, whether they be buddy reads or just books that I tacked on just because they're sequels or something. So, in October, I have about like four to five buddy reads. I am doing, and it's going to be nuts. So, um, I believe Ray, Ashley, and I are going to be reading the sequel to The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. So, I'm really excited because I really enjoyed The Gilded Ones, and we want to read the second one before the third one comes out I believe either at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year so the second one is called the merciless ones um, and I'm just really excited to see what happens in this book and with the characters that we have so then the next buddy read I'm going to be doing is with Monet and Ray and that is going to be Fury Song which is the third book in the Fireborn trilogy um, this is the last book and we're intrigued enough to keep going and finish this trilogy. I'm not going to say excited because the first two books were okay, but I'm intrigued and I'm still interested enough to see how the author ends this trilogy and uh, see where she takes it from where the second book ended because it ended on a really interesting and kind of weird note. Then I'm going to be reading the second book in the Diviners series with Ashley and Robin. I believe it's called The Lair of Dreams by um, Libba Bray. I really enjoyed The Diviners and a lot more than I was expecting so I'm excited to just hop into the second book with them and see if we continue to like the story. Then me and Monet are going to be buddy reading Nanny for the Neighbors by Lily Gold. This uh, is a why Choose Romance, and this author strictly so far has only written Why Choose Romances, which is intriguing. We both enjoyed um, Three Swedish Mountain Men, so we want to give some of her other books a try, and I figured the nanny one might be a fun one to give a chance to. And then the last two uh, books I kind of have on this list are not Buddy Reads, but they're sequels I've been really wanting to get to, and that just came out this year. And so the first one is Some Shall Break, which is the sequel to None Shall Sleep, which I read like a few years ago, absolutely loved and wished for a sequel. And then she announced this year that she was coming out with a sequel and it dropped. So I'm really, really excited. It seems like we're continuing on from kind of where we left off in the first book. And I just, I'm just super excited. Um, in case you don't know, this is about two kids 
who it's based in the 80s and these two grids get recruited to work for the FBI to help solve teen um murders and like study teen murderers and yeah it's it's in it's intense but I loved it it was giving me criminal minds it was giving me Jennifer Lynn Barnes the natural vibes so I'm here for it and then the last book I have on this list is A Queen of Thieves and Chaos by K.A. Tucker. This is the third book in her fantasy series. I loved the first one. The second one I was really disappointed by. And so the third one is about to probably be a make or break for me in regards to whether I'm going to finish this series or not. Because the second one was was like a big disappointment for me. Um... I don't even remember where we ended off, but I'm just going to dive right into the third one once I can get my hands on the audiobook. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to like seeing what happens next. Hopefully she picks things up because the first book was like going, going, going. And then we get the second book and it slowed down a lot. And that's why it was disappointing. So I'm hoping like in the third book she'll pick it back up again and get us to where we need to be in order for like things to be happening. So that is my October TBR. That's a lot of books. I don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully I get through a good chunk, a good chunk of them. If not all, then a good chunk. So we'll see. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you are still here, if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. Leave me a spooky emoji. Let me know if you're going to be participating in Black Queen. Let me know where you're starting. And if you want to see more videos from me, hit that subscribe button. You are all sunflowers in a wolf of a week.